it's Webs here and it's time to get blasting with a arcane based mercenary team. While I've been looking to make an arcane build for mercenary mode for quite a while, the inclusion of one mercenary in particular was inspired by this comment above, which is Cornelius, which is a mercenary that I didn't really think about including, but it does fix some of the glass cannon nature of the build a little bit, though it still does have quite a bit of issues with survivability. So I finally decided to just embrace that nature and go down the most damage possible route, seemingly possible. I tried out a few other mercenaries in this team, such as Brightwing and Tyrion, just so you could make your ill house survive a bit longer. But just going down the glass cannon route showed better results than going down some weird type of hybrid. So the idea behind this build is to use Millhouse, Cornelius, and Tyrande as your starting lineup so you can scale your arcane damage as much as humanly possible through Millhouse and Tyrande using the Mana Rod equipment on Millhouse and the Band of the Wild equipment on Tyrande. I know this might look a little bit odd since we only have one mercenary with a nature ability which is cairn but it does come up a lot more than you would actually think and that's why i ended up settling on that instead of the extra damage from verdant recurve while we're discussing tronde and millhouse i should go over the fact that the combo between Elune's grace and arcane bolt actually get a little bit hard to line up after the initial scale so that's why you're actually running blank fox in the build just so you have an additional way to actually make them line up Though the starting lineup of Tyrande, Cornelius, and Millhouse is what you're always going to want to do with this build just because Cornelius will be able to protect your other two mercenaries and you're going to want to use Shield of the Dawn equipment on him. While the starting up lineup for this build is actually pretty simple to understand, the remainder of the build is kind of hard to understand of which mercenary you're going to want to put out forth just because it changes depending on the matchup. For example, if Cornelius dies first and Millhouse and Tyrande aren't that low of HP. Blink Fox is the one that you're going to want to put out next. But if it is either Millhouse or Tyrande that dies first, you usually are going to want to put Karen down as your fourth mercenary instead. Or if there's a bunch of attack based mercenaries where you could actually put down a taunt and it would cause your Millhouse and Tyrande to survive a lot longer. The equipment for Karen, of course, being reincarnation as it usually is whenever he's in a build. Karen in the build is actually serving two purposes. The first being to protect your two surviving mercenaries from the beginning of the game and the other purpose is to have some way to actually slow down your opponent when you have Diablo down on the field. And if you decide to actually put him down fourth instead of Blink Fox, you're going to want to put Diablo down as your fifth mercenary instead of Blink Fox and then just finish off with the Blink Fox. But otherwise, you're going to want to put Karen down 5th and then follow him up with a Diablo as your 6th mercenary. Now Blink Fox is the final arcane mercenary you can actually use currently in Hearthstone. And his equipment is kind of up to personal choice. I use 10th Tail just because of the fact that I can then sometimes copy a key opponent mercenary whenever I need to. But you could also use Arcane Fang if your Millhouse is actually surviving long enough to put down a Blink Fox in combination with him. But most of the time I figured 10th Tail was more consistent so I went with it instead. And his Mana Blink actually serves as the purpose to actually reline up both Tyrande and Millhouse if you do place him down fourth. And finally the last mercenary in the team is Diablo. When you have Karen in a team and you have an extra spot why not put Diablo? He's mainly in here just to serve as a additional way to do a bunch of damage to your opponent's mercenaries and uses the black soulstone equipment as a way to increase his survivability and not many people are actually running diablo as they were a few weeks ago the metagame has kind of shifted a little bit so he is actually still powerful but a lot of the new meta strategies are a lot quicker than him so that's why you need karen in the team too with that being said let's go find some games okay so this might be a difficult matchup just because of the fact that they have mostly fighter mercenaries. But depending on how we play this, we might actually win. Okay, so they are beasts, which is actually probably the worst matchup for this build. Mainly because Crush is going to always target this. So we're just going to have to play it like this. I know Crush is slower than it. This should at least protect Millhouse from... Anything besides Rexar and 
crush hitting it. Though they could actually go after Gironde, I guess, too. They're going to go for Millhouse, which is the correct play. I can't fault them for doing that. We'll put down Cairn, duplicate Cairn, attack there. I think this should kill King Crush, which is actually pretty good for us. Yeah, we actually do kill King Crush. Oh, I should have targeted the Rexar instead, but I guess it doesn't matter. Okay, so Dialp should be quicker than whatever they put down next. Yeah, let's do it like this. Yeah, this should kill both of those and then maybe kill this. Or not. Did get pretty close though. Okay, so they should have a Diablo of their own now. And our stomp is forever too. So... As long as we're just quicker. So Brucon's dead. It's one bit of scaling done. The problem is that Diablo is gonna go down and then we're gonna be a little bit screwed. Oh actually it depends if Oh no, it'll be quicker. We'll just try, I guess. The good news is we get a actual Diablo off of uh Blink Fox though. Because the last ability used was Diablo's. Or not. Am I? Why? Why is this banana frenzy? This should be... Game, why do you do this to me? Um, yeah, let's do it like this. That's so stupid. It should be Diablo's fire stomp. But for some reason, it just isn't. Should be good, I hope. No, the stupid taunt is in the way. Well, we should win though. There's our fire stomp, and we do win. Okay, so they're even. Let's not make a mistake in our placements and actually put Cornelius in the middle because otherwise he is completely useless in this build. Oh, orcs fun or not actually that's kind of interesting oh this actually might be a really good matchup for us depending on what the remaining mercenaries are they're mostly orcs like uh sarfang rakara and garrosh i'd assume we might be perfectly fine they're gonna focus down cornelius which i'm fine with we'll focus down the Grom, just because that can get a little bit annoying, and I don't really care about leaving these two up. I'm just hoping the Grom operation was going to be correct, but oh well. Okay, so let's put Blink Fox down. This should be... that doesn't kill that. I think that should be fine. Why didn't that kill? Okay, so Karen is next. And this should still be the slow, right? So we should be able to kill at least three or two of them. Okay, so Karen and Diablo as our last mercenaries? Just have a sneaking suspicion. Oh, Ariel and... Okay, that's weird. That is just strange. Um... We'll put up the taunt, then we'll focus carry all down. Kinda hope- yeah, that's why I- oh, I guess that would be slower. Okay, so, we're going to- that should kill that. We should actually win on this turn, or be pretty damn close. Though the 232s is a little bit annoying. Killing the Blink Fox is also a bit annoying, but we do just have this. Like, the combo we actually wanted. 
Okay, mostly fighters, which means this is not going to be the best matchup. But it all depends on what those fighters are. If it's orcs, then we might be a little bit more screwed than if it is beasts. Because I do think I have a better beast strategy now that I've played against it a few times with it. Okay, so it's orcs. This is not what I wanted to see. Um... I wonder, actually, if it's not technically orcs, but it's smite. I, I guess it doesn't really matter either way. We're going to put up the taunt and only think the mirror images can actually go through. I could be wrong. And while I do want to kill the Sam Murrow, that's just how I usually play. Okay, so this starts out 12, then it goes to 19. Yeah, we're going to do it like this, because if we don't, then it's just going to be a little bit annoying to try to. And this way we can actually snipe one of their mercenaries before we lose a mercenary, which we're going to lose either way. And then we can put Cairn down next. And then put this shield, the taunt back up. Yeah, this should work. I think we're quicker than whatever they can do. Okay, so it is Sarfang. We're gonna do this, we're gonna do that, and then we're gonna AoE. And nothing should be able to hit through this. I guess War 1 would work, but I don't know if they're willing to actually War 1. Oh, Mirror Images technically is quicker. Going after the Tyrande is kind of a mistake on their behalf, but it is what it is. Okay, so uh, I'm assuming Gul'dan and Garrosh? Rukan, okay. Um, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. And then AoE twice, which should kill everything but Rukan. This actually went a lot better than I expected. I was kind of hoping this would have died. And we just went... All right, now that I've demonstrated what the build can actually do, let's discuss my final thoughts on the build itself. So weirdly, this build actually performed better once I started recording than when I was actually playtesting it. I had a lot of issues with this being very glass cannon-y whenever I was playtesting it early on, but as I was recording the games, it actually felt pretty decent, which is actually kind of a shock. It was the opposite case of a lot of the other builds that I have previously put out, such as the attack-based human build, or even the Sylvanas build that I put out previously. And that's actually a pretty good sign that this has a lot of potential. Do you want to say, however, as I said earlier, it is a very glass cannon type build. It does pull off some wins that you wouldn't expect it to, which makes it pretty difficult to actually recommend this build unless you like something kind of glass cannon-y and you can actually get used to it. But don't expect this to win games instantly, it's going to take some time getting used to. And my biggest gripe with this build was actually Blink Fox himself. He is the third mercenary for the Arcane Synergy, however his equipment is actually really frustrating to use. Tenth Tail is either very buggy or working perfectly depending on who you ask, but given the fact of how it's worded, I would expect it to actually steal the last ability used on the previous turn whenever you place him down. But all this equipment actually does is make him look at the last ability on the very first turn if you play him late into the game. Because of the fact that the starting lineup of this build is actually pretty concrete, you're never going to want to play him early on in the game anyways, which means this equipment is pretty bad, especially for late game, because you're just going to get some ability that was an early game tool, and you're not going to get something like a Diablo Stomp or something else. But I don't honestly know which of the other two equipments that I would actually prefer to use. I think I would go over the mana runes instead of Arcane Fang because most of the time I end up playing Blink Fox as my final mercenary and by then Millhouse is probably already dead so you don't need the scaling off of Arcane Fling anymore. As the increased scaling off of the first equipment would actually not be that useful that late into the game. But it all depends on what you want to do. So overall if you want to fun little build that can actually shock a lot of opponents try this one out 
It only uses one legendary mercenary, and it's a legendary mercenary that a lot of people at this point probably have leveled up. So it's not that hard to actually finish out this build. And like always, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, bye bye.